Hey guys, Kurt Chan, Tactical Advantage at Autodesk, and today I want to show you a couple of tips and tricks in regards to using Cam for Fusion 360 in under two minutes. Let's go ahead and dive right in. I already have my setup created, and what I like to do is already model my stock, because when I go to the stock tab, I can pick for the mode from solid, pick that multi-body, and now it's defined for my stock. I also have my 3D adaptive clearance strategy set up. So rough out the part, but now I want to apply a finishing strategy. So if I zoom right in, I can actually do a 2D contour. So under 2D, drop down to 2D contour, and under geometry, go ahead and pick this outside edge. What this does is it's only going to finish off around that outside edge. I want to finish that entire face, so kind of array all the way out. If I come over here to the passes tab, under multiple finishing passes, check that on, I can say instead of doing two, let me go with 35, for example, and you can see this. It's gonna go all the way out, who knows how far, but do 35 passes, and for the step over, it's always gonna be typically 10% the value of the tool diameter. If I right click on that, come down to edit expression, it will actually show me that. 10% the value of the tool diameter. I could change that to 15% if I want, if I choose, do it like that. And once I have that already set up, if I right click on that step over where it says, I can say make default. So anytime I come back into that, that new expression is already set up, ready to go, which is actually really nice. So I'm gonna go in and say, okay, so we can take a look at this. And you can see it kind of goes out, to raise all the way out, but you can see it goes past the geometry. So one tip is if I go back and edit that 2D contour under geometry, by default, we don't have this checked on, but if I check this on, what this means, it kind of gives me a containment boundary, saying, hey, keep within maybe the boundary of my stock, or even the, for example, let me go and clear that out, the boundary of my part, just like that. So go in and click OK, and it'll show, hey, it's only gonna keep within that boundary, but you see I have a lot of retracts there to, to do that finishing pass. If I go in and edit that contour back again, I'm gonna just uncheck the stock contours and it's going to go all the way around but let's take a look at this if i right click on the contour come down to machine time this is actually going to take two minutes and 20 seconds to machine so what i can do which is a faster way instead of doing a 2d strategy if i go in and just suppress that toolpath right click come down to suppress say okay or yes under 3d we have something called the horizontal toolpath and what this does it looks at all the flat faces and there's a finishing pass all across it. I'm going to use that same tool. I can even change under passes. I can change anything I want. But two, I'm just going to say OK. And it's going to analyze the entire part, find all the horizontal faces, and do a finishing pass on it. If I right click on that horizontal, come down to machining time. This is actually only going to take 58 seconds now. So a lot more efficiency when you work with 3D strategies. Lastly, what you'll see is I want to do a parallel path, probably on this angled face. So under 3D, come down to parallel. I'm actually going to pick a different tool, right? Not a bullnose end mill. I'm going to go with a ball end mill that I have, quarter inch. I can even come over here to passes, change the step over, which I want, right click, edit expression, not do 50% of the tool diameter. Let me go with 10%. I can always set that as a default. And under geometry now, just pick that face, even change back under passes, instead of to maybe 45 degree angle of how I want it to be. And then now I need to do all those other instances. So why not do a pattern? Click the toolpath I want a pattern, come down under setup, new pattern. From here, not a linear, we'll go down with this circular pattern, pick a rotation reference, so circular edge, for example, and instances of six all the way around. And there we have it. So there you can see I can actually uh, work with 2D contours, work with stock contours if I choose to do a containment boundary, as well as introduction to the horizontal toolpath for finishing any flat face, and then looking at patterns again. Hopefully this helped you guys out, and hopefully it was under two minutes. Thanks again, guys.